Now, when you um, think about batons, oftentimes you think about law enforcement and uh, batons, truncheons, whatever you want to call them, are the oldest, less lethal tool that has been uh, utilized by law enforcement pretty much anywhere in the world. There's records of these being used literally centuries, even thousands of years ago um, to, uh, by law enforcement officials, people that are trying to keep the peace as a way of um, delivering some uh, impact. Oftentimes we call it um, pain compliance. Okay? And uh, so I want to talk a little bit again about that. So when you talk about batons, okay, uh, batons in general, uh, including expandable batons, we're talking about the ability to generate um, blunt trauma. Okay? And I've heard people before say, you know, batons are not um, effective based on maybe the experience they had in law enforcement or um, with experience in other areas. But to say that a baton, an impact weapon, is not effective is to say that um, any type of uh, blood trauma is not effective in general. To say that punching is not effective, kicking is not effective. Um, but all a baton is is a tool that's utilized to generate blunt trauma. Okay? So if you think about it, if you got hit by a baseball bat, if you got hit by uh, a, a tire iron, if you got hit by a crowbar, a lead pipe, okay? these are all things that you think, yeah, if I got hit by that, depending on a few variables, it can hurt, it can be effective. Okay? And the same thing is true with a baton. Right? Um, there's a number of variables there. Some of those variables are the tool itself, the qualities of that tool, okay? meaning the length, the circumference, the density of that tool. And then there's the wielder of the tool, the, the end user, and um, the variables that come with that part portion there. Okay. I've got here um, a, a common uh, police baton. This is actually a uh, baton I utilized when I was a full-time police officer and worked uh, public order um, during the uh, Winter Olympics here in Utah. Um, and um, this is a very common type of what's often called a straight stick. Okay? And you can see it's got a good circumference to it. The, the weight is not too heavy, not maybe a little bit light for me, but again, when talking about police tools, oftentimes you're trying to find one tool that fits all, meaning tall officers, short officers, strong officers, weak officers, male officers, female officers, so on and so forth. So um, it's just kind of a general one size fits all type of a tool. Um, and it's pretty good for serving, you know, the, its uh, intended purposes. Okay. Um, uh, again, uh, the density of this tool uh, and and the length of it are going to be some factors that make this effective or not. Okay. Uh, the density, meaning um, the ability to ge generate some kinetic energy. Okay. Um, as I hit someone and I'm trying to generate some pain or potentially some injury, the more kinetic energy I can generate with this tool. Um, the uh, more effective it's going to be. And there's a couple of uh, key components of kinetic, kinetic energy. One of them is going to be velocity or acceleration, and the other is going to be mass. Okay? Um, and the tool here is the side that is going to determine what kind of mass is there. Right? And so the more mass is this, that's in this, the more that side of that equation is going to be enhanced. The less mass I have in this, then that's going to diminish, and, uh, which is going to kind of come in when I talk about expandable batons. Okay? Um, and then we talk about acceleration, then you're talking about you know, the ability of the end user to get some good speed uh, and, 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 and power in their striking. Okay? Now, um, the pros of a baton like this is uh, a straight stick is the ability to kind of um, have a little bit more mass potentially. When you talk about expandable batons, oftentimes you're talking about a baton that has to be able to close into itself. Okay? Therefore, each portion of that that's going inside the other has to get smaller and smaller. And there you see, this is kind of a first generation, I guess you could call it, of, of, um, of expandable batons that were really utilized to a wide degree by law enforcement. This is an ASP, ASP brand uh, friction lock expandable baton. Okay. Um, if you've used these, you're kind of familiar with it, but you can see what I'm talking about. Each shaft as it goes, it expands, gets smaller, and then smaller, so that the, the, the shaft that I end up having to utilize typically to hit with is very thin on this particular tool, okay? Um, and so oftentimes it's so thin, they gotta add another little knob on the end there so that it uh, is not going to actually penetrate if I had to thrust at someone, which is not really effective with a friction lock baton anyway because of the, cap the capacity for it to close in on my, on my hand as I do that, okay? But that's kind of one of the first generation there. Um, and again, it was, you know, um, uh, there were some pros and cons to it. 
Um, it was, a, again, a first generation of the tile, so it was more readily available. I could keep it on my belt when I need it, okay? Um, and I uh, have it there, just like, you know, just like with a firearm. If I'm gonna get in, if I know I'm going into a gunfight, I prefer to have a shotgun or a rifle with me, but a handgun is something I can have with me at all times, and it's available at that emergency when I need it, and I don't have time to get other tools. Same thing with this, it's just the expandable baton. It's something small, compact, I can have it on my belt at all times. And um, in fact, when I was a new police officer in the, the two departments I worked with, Solid County Sheriff's Office and Solid City PD, um, the baton was something that we had, but the, everyone still had one of these. And at least with the Sheriff's Office, we still had a ring on our belt, so if we knew we were going to a quote-unquote hot call, something that was high probability of turning into a fight, then we would grab that out of our car, ring it up, and I'd have it with me, okay? So we had the options, understanding that, yeah, that was probably gonna be the better tool, okay? But that, again, was on, on my belt at all times when I needed it and I didn't have time to go back to my car to grab that, okay? Um, one of the problems we saw with these is, and again, as my experience as a police trainer is, one, um, we saw a lot of bendage, okay? We just saw a lot of them that would bend when they were, and, and, one, and for a, a friction lock baton or an expandable baton, if it bends, it's not gonna close in on itself anymore. So that was one of the issues we saw. Probably the bigger issue was just the fact that that side has such little mass that officers, and I've experienced this, this myself, uh, carrying these on the street, would hit people and um, it just wouldn't be effective. Not because batons are not effective, sometimes it was the tool had a lot to do with it. Sometimes it was the end user, okay? But the tool is with no mass there, if you kind of think about it, if I just had a, um, uh, a, a hanger, uh, a clothes hanger, right? A wire clothes hanger and I just opened up and I hit someone with it, right? It's metal, right? It's, it's just very thin. You can think about how much, how effective that's gonna maybe hurt. It's got that kind of a whipping kind of effect but it's really not gonna stop anyone that's intent on, on uh, doing you know, their criminal actions or their violent actions. So um, that was one of the problems, the confidence in the tool that, uh, or the, the lack of confidence that this, these types of batons brought. And I know officers that whenever they took these out, they didn't even try hitting it like, like it was intended. They would turn it upside down and like a baseball bat and decided that they were more effective hitting with the handle, okay? which is probably out of policy in most places, but I know officers that would do that. Okay, uh, another generation you started seeing come out in batons, and again, I'm not getting into all manufacturers here, but just a general generation kind of, of technology, you started seeing locking batons like this Monad Lock, Auto Lock, okay, um, it's better in that it is physically locked open. Friction lock batons, sometimes when you hit, breaks the friction and they close on you in the middle of a fight, and so um, you don't want a baton that you're trying to open in the middle of, of that uh, altercation. Uh, sometimes you'll also see that they just open so tight that they're really hard to close. You gotta bang them on some, on, on some cement to get them to close. This one is a locking baton. Tolerance is not great. You can kind of hear the rattle in that, how much give it's got. And it's still fairly thin too in that end shaft. So it loses a lot of that mass. Um, they would do things like add another piece uh, uh, on the end. I forget what they call it, the power tip or something like that uh, to add a little bit more mass onto it. But, a um, little bit better in technology, but you know, going in the right direction. Um, again, there's other batons. Asp came out with a locking baton about 15 years ago or more, um, 15 to 20 years ago. Um, a German company, Bonovi, who I've done a lot of consulting and training work for over the last 15 years, uh, came out with a, um, their baton um, that uh, doesn't have that rattle, locked tight of tolerances. Because it is tight of tolerances, you can see that they're actually a lot tighter fit so that end shaft is does have more mass right so you're kind of helping to remedy the issue of less mass in the strike surface a little bit better weight in that um, and a great locking mechanism that fixed some of the problems in earlier designs from different manufacturers again with these you hit that button on the end and they close up okay and again these are these batons all come in different lengths there's other companies out there doing great things too um, the company uh, from um, from Ireland, that's uh, the first time I've seen something like this, but this is a four sections uh, expandable baton. You see how big that is? Obviously, this would be too big to utilize with one hand, but it would be utilized with two hands, okay, like, a, like, a, like a baseball bat or a um, shinai and a kendo type strikes, but it's a two-handed, a lot more standoff, 
But again, um, training is a paramount because the longer the weapon is, the easier it is for the person you're using it on to get a hold of it, right? So you, you've got kind of pro and con. But again, the length of that is another benefit of, an ex of a baton, expandable batons included, right? Is I've got more standoff distance. I can hit someone and stay out of the range that but hopefully all things being equal that they could hit me without closing the gap, so on and so forth. So I've got the potentially the ability to generate more impact with that tool, um, generate more uh, kinetic energy than, I, than and, and they're easy to learn, right? It's a very natural movement to get a baton and just do that motion, just to hit like that, okay? It's a very natural movement, so it's training the masses, training police officers to do that, versus trying, trying to teach them to be expert boxers, so on and so forth, and then the other side of that too. There's no uh, injury to the baton, right? So I'm not hurting parts of my body by striking, I've got longer stand-up distances, I've got the potential to create more kinetic energy, so lots of advantages to these tools, and there's a reason why, again, it's not only the oldest, less lethal tool utilized uh, by law enforcement around the world, but it's today the most common, without a doubt, less lethal tool utilized around the world. Um, obviously, there's other things that officers use, uh, chemical agents, pepper spray, OC, um, you've got tasers, things of that nature that are available in some parts of the world, but they're completely not available or not legal in other parts of the world. And sometimes it's just because of the cost or because of the laws. So that again, it comes back to the baton is the most common tool, still widely used here in the United States. And as I travel the world personally, I see it used in a lot of countries. Why? Because it's effective, okay? It's, 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 it just takes a good tool and also good training, okay? Training is, the, is, is a paramount thing here because in order for that tool to be effective, I need to be able to deliver strikes with good power, speed, okay? Speed is a component of power kinetic energy, timing and distance awareness. In other words, accuracy, being able to hit what I'm trying to hit without getting hit by the person that I'm trying to hit, right? So I'm trying to accomplish all these things and that takes training, okay? um, The tool can also be used as a, um, a, a, as a leverage um, uh, implement in what we call um, baton assisted control holds, something that in the TRICOM uh, training videos that we get into, try to make it as simple as possible because it, it can get complex and training time is often limited for law enforcement, but if you're person kind of person that's going to train on your own then um, you know there's a lot of great things you can learn as far as utilizing a baton to leverage control holds okay so um, it's a great tool it requires training okay? there's a lot of great training that we uh, for this tool that we have in uh, in the tricom expandable baton program so check them out and uh, for the next few days this is the longer video of this week but for the next few days uh, I'll be putting out a few more videos talking about some of the pros and cons of an expandable baton. Look forward to it. Talk to you then. The more complex these techniques become, the less likely you're going to be able to use them in a real situation under stress. Push out, and that could be to the face. Shuffling in, and then come down. That just gives me a target. Push, and then strike. I'm going to bring it around behind his back. Okay? Because now if he bends his arm, I'm going to lose that. I may transition in case I need it. See how I drop my shoulder, grabbing the baton. If I'm choking him, what's my end game? Is this a lethal force situation? Well, in most situations, it is if I'm trying to put a choke in on with the baton. So I'm just trying to survive some kind of encounter that's just gotten out of hand. Not crossing my arms as I bring this weapon up, but bringing this weapon around. If I just try and transition here, What's gonna happen is action versus reaction, bang, he's gonna stick me with that knife before I've got a chance to get my sidearm out. Hit propels the shoulder forward, and that propels the weapon. Push down. I don't wanna bring his hand to my gun. And I twist. Bring him over to the side. Twist. One, two, three, boom, and then I come in with a quick combo. I just wanna start answering back as quickly as possible. And do the technique slow, um, that way you're not gonna get any injuries in your training. Have fun with it. And I'm going to take position, and then getting the baton out, striking, and from here I'm trying to create space. Then okay, getting the baton out. It, it may be a simple thing, but it's not necessarily a natural thing. Same principles of power. And just do it slow to start off and get your distance and timing. I'm here in a, in a real world environment, there may be things on the ground. So just be cognizant that those should only be done at the opportune time. Most people will need some training in, and I always will end in the exact same fighting posture. I'm gonna use my training partner here to kind of help illustrate that change in distance. I move in here, 
and I could actually reach the head with the pommel of the baton, change that much distance. Very high profile, and immediately I end back in my fighting posture that we've talked about. Be very low profile in that I'm still trying to de-escalate a, a, a potentially volatile situation, so that when I take the baton out, it opens out of the holster. And let the energy transfer into the target before I retract it or go to the other side of the body. Up to the left shoulder, cross load, but I don't want to lean away and shy away from those punches because that puts me off balance and it's going to knock me potentially even to the ground. If I'm going to attempt a lock with the baton, I need to create an, a window of opportunity. If I attempt to, to put a lock on someone and they're assaulting me, I'm probably going to get hit. Okay,